Okay, welcome back to math. Today, we're going to estimate the quotient for division problems. What's the quotient? Well, the quotient is right here. That would be the answer of a division problem. Now, in a division problem, you start with a dividend, which is also called the total. And then the divisor is how many um, things are we going to cut it up into? And then how many items are in each um, category? So, for instance, we could do it backwards since the dividend is the total. It would be like saying 29 times what equals 913. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is estimating. Estimating is like rounding, except we don't want to have any remainder. Well, I want to look at this three right here, and I want to say, what does my three go into? So if I said three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three, nine, um, three times four is 12, three times five is 15, and so on. So we're gonna say, okay, now this three will go into what number is gonna be closest to this that it can go into evenly. And we're gonna say what goes in uh, to the nine. So what we wanna do is we're gonna rewrite our problem and we're gonna rewrite it with a 900 and we're gonna divide it by 30. And that will give us our answer. Now, how many, uh, if we said three times what is nine, or how many threes are in nine, you would say three. And is that our answer? Do we have our answer? Well, I would say, no, we probably don't have our answer because if we put that, let's check our work, okay? So I'm going to take this three and move it down here take my 30 and put it here and I'm going to multiply these two because remember what I said earlier up here it's like doing um, multiplication in reverse so I'm going to go ahead and um, check my answer 3 times 0 is 0 and 3 times 3 is 9 well that's 90 is that what I have up here no it's not is it so how about 30? Well, let's see if that works, okay? So I'm gonna multiply my 30 times 30. Now some of you know uh, that all we have to really do is, is multiply three times three, and that's gonna give me nine, and then how many zeros? So I have one, two zeros, and I put that behind it, and I have 900. And that's what I have here, isn't it? So 30 is my right answer. Another way to know that that's your right answer is notice how many zeros are here. Two. Well, on this side of the division sign, it's like backward multiplication. I have this zero is that one, and this zero is this one. So as you notice, I have two zeros in my total and I'll have two zeros here. Okay? Now you're thinking, wow, that's kind of neat. It is. Math is amazing. So if I said, if I had three times what would be 900, what would I say? Well, you would say you're going to have to have 300, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9, and then my two zeros, right, make my 900. Um, it's 3, 3 hundreds, right? Isn't that what it is? And we know that's 900. Okay? Now, also, let me do it this way. If I had a 30 here, what do I need here to make a 900? 
Well, I would need another three to make the nine, right? Three and three would make the nine. And then I only have one zero, but I need two. Or I could do it like this. 300 times what equals 900? Well, you're probably saying it's a three. You're right. Because I have my two zeros here. I have my two zeros here. I have one, two zeros there. Two zeros here. I have my two zeros here and two zeros there. So as you can see, there's kind of a pattern with zeros. It's kind of an interesting thing. All right, so let's move on to estimating. We have 151 and we have a 39. What are we going to look at? Well, we want to look at our three. And three goes into what? Do you remember from up here? What, what is close? Look at this number right here. What is that? It's a 15. That's right. So do we have a 15 here? Yes, we do. So we can just say we're going to round this to 150 and we're going to divide by 30. Okay. So what do you think our answer is going to be? Well, 3 times 5 would be 15, right? And then we have our 0 there. Now let's check our work. So I'm going to write my problem down here to just check it. I'm going to take that 5, put it down there. Take my 30 and put it there. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 3 is 15. Is this the same as my total that I started with? Yes? Then I did it correctly. 5 is my right answer. Have this problem in your book. 525 divided by 25. And you went, wow, I don't know how to do that problem. Because I don't know my 25s. Well, think of 25s like quarters. How many quarters does it take to make a hundred? Like a hundred cents or a dollar? Well, it would take four, right? So I have 25, 50, 75, 100, right? So there's my hundred. Now, how many of those hundreds do I need in 525? You're saying, hey, I need five of these. Okay, well, let's do that. There's your 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So we have 500, right? What is our uh, number that we have? Are we missing something? You're probably saying, yes, we're missing 125. You're right. So we just add that down here, okay, right on the bottom. We're going to put another 25. So how many 25s do we have? Let's find out. What could we use that we've been working with recently to figure out how many 25s I have in this area? That's right. You said the area model. Nice job. So I could say one, two, three, four. So I've got four. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to count this guy down here. I'm going to just count to five. So four, five times four is 20. We have 20, 25s in this area. We have 20, 25s. And we have, oh, this one left, right? So what do we do? We add it to our 20. We add one more 25, and that means we have 21 25s. So that's how we solved our problem of 525 divided by 25. It, we have 21 of them. We have 20 here and this one. So uh, if we wrote this out, we could write it out as 5 times 4 plus 1. And that would equal 21. Okay? So you can draw out your problems. This one right here, 241, and we're going to estimate it. Well, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at our 5, and our 5 goes into what is close to 24. I hope you just said 25. You're right. So I'm going to put a 0 there, and then I'm going to put a 0 here. And I can go like that, right? How many 50s are in 25? Well, 5 times what? What is 25? You said 5? 
Nice job. So we have a 5, and then we have a 0, right? Would it be 50? No? How come? Mr. McGuire, you just taught us. We have one zero here, and we have one zero here, so we're just left with just the five in our answer. Nice job. Now, some of you could have said, well, you know, we could take this and make it 240 and divide it by 60. You're right. We could do that as well, and that would be fine because um, six goes into... 24, how many times? 4, right? So, that would be fine. You could do it either way, would be acceptable. Okay? Now let's go to our thousand, um, our digits with a thousand. How do we do that? Well, we do it the same way. We take our, um, we take our um, highlighter and we go, okay, we have a 3 here. So what are we going to, oh, wow, hey, I've seen this one before, haven't you? It goes into 9. So I'm going to make this 9,000. I'm going to divide by 30. Now this is where we can use our zero um, strategy, okay? 3 times what is 9? 3 times 3 is 9, right? I've got my zero there and a zero here. How many zeros do I have left? Two, right? So my answer has to have two zeros in it. So my answer would be 300. Now if you want to check that, <clears throat> you can. You can just multiply it by 30. How do you do that? Here's how I do it. I take my zero and I bring it down as my placeholder. And then I move over to the three and multiply that times this zero. 3 times 0 is 0, then 3 times this 0 is 0, and then 3 times 3 is 9. I have 9,000, and I have 9,000. These are the same numbers, so I did it correctly. The answer is 300. Okay? What about this one, where we have 81 and we have 85. <clears throat> well, you're going, okay, let's see. Hey, I've got an 8 here, and I've got an 8 here. That'll work out. But i got a 1 here, and I have a 5 here. So what could I do? Well, I can make it 8,100 and divide it by 81, right? So how many 81s do I have in 81? Well, I have 1, right? And then how many zeros do I have? I don't have any zeros here, right? But I have two zeros here. So I just add it to that. Now if we wanted to check our work, we could put our 81 here. And we could say 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Placeholder. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 1 is 1. I'm sorry, is 8. <laughs> 0, 0, 1, 8. Is this the same number as we have here? Yes. Our answer is 100, right? Or you could say, well, you know, I want to make it easier than that. No problem. Then make it 8,000 and divide by 80. And what's it going to be? Well, I know um, this makes 1, right? How many 8s are in 8? 1. I've got a... Zero here, I got a zero here. So then I take my two zeros and I move it over here, and it gives me a hundred. So if you notice, I get I come up with the same answer using slightly different numbers, but it works out just great. So this is how you um, estimate quotients. Give that a try and see how it works. I love math.